Hello, I'm Chris Parker with ParkerPhotographic.com and this Lightroom Classic tutorial is all about sharing your images with the world by exporting them out of Lightroom. Not only will you learn how to export, but also how to create presets for exporting different size images and other attributes. So if you're ready, let's do it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is tell Lightroom which photos need to be exported. So I'm going to select my first image here. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select the last image that I want included in the export or use command or control plus the letter A to select them all. Now we can go up to file and export from this top option right here. But let's talk about these other three export options real quick. Export with previous will export with the attributes that you applied on your last export. Export with preset will allow you to export via one of your user presets, which I'll show you how to create once we get into that part of this video tutorial. And you can see I have three different presets. I also export to PNG or via that file format. And I'll explain why that is in just a moment. There's also some pre-made presets by Lightroom and then I have some from Luminar Neo as well. And then export as catalog will allow you to export all the files selected as a catalog. So let's say you have two or more catalogs and you wanna merge those catalogs into one. Well, you're gonna select all your images and then export it as a catalog. And then to merge them, you're gonna come up here and select import from another catalog. Once you select that catalog from here, you will then have that catalog merged into the current catalog that is open. All right, let's go into the export dialog window. And there's a lot of options right here that you can apply to your export or things that you can do during the export process. So we're gonna go over these as well as the presets over here in how to create a preset and why you would want to do that. So the first thing we need to do is tell Lightroom where to export the files. So you can export to a specific folder from here, or you can choose your folder from this button. You can also place it into a subfolder. Now, when you export your files, they're not included in the catalog. So you're gonna export them as a JPEG, PNG file, PSD file, TIFF file, whatever file format you want, but that file that is created during the export is not included in the catalog. So if you wanna include them in the catalog, you're gonna to add to this catalog with this option here. And then you have some options here to tell Lightroom what to do based on different situations in case you're exporting to the same folder over and over again, you wanna make sure you're not overwriting any existing files in that location. Now you do have the option here to rename your file if that's something you wanna do during the export process. Personally, I like to rename my files in Lightroom, not during the export process. So in that case, the exported file, as you can see right here, will get this file format. So it's going to retain the same file naming structure that I have in Lightroom with that file format, whatever I choose in the file settings down here. So we also have options for video. We're not doing videos. So let's take a look at our file settings. So from here, you can select your different file formats. So if I'm posting my images on my blog, I'm going to choose a JPEG file. But if I'm posting my images on social media, I'm going to choose PNG. And the reason why is when you upload to Facebook, Instagram, whatever the case may be, they're compressing your file a lot and it's going to degrade your image. I find that PNG files retain more of the detail and it's of a higher quality after the compression. So I recommend PNG file for social media. Now with JPEG files, you have the quality options here. So I would recommend a minimum of 80 up to 100 to retain the highest quality possible for your JPEG files. Now, the reason you would wanna go down to 80 is because you want a smaller file. Now, if I'm posting on my website, I will use a quality of 80 to have a smaller file size versus 100. But we can also limit the file size to a specific size from here. Now, the other option you have here is your color space. So if you're printing your images at home or at a vendor of your choice, you're going to need to 
refer to them or your printer manual to find out what color space to use. If you're posting online, you're gonna use sRGB. All right, next we have to tell Lightroom the size of the file. If you want to retain the original file size and resolution, then you want to keep this turned off. If you want to resize to fit based on these options here, then you will type in the width or the height based on what you need for width and height. And if you select dimensions or one of these other options, you'll get different options. Now, if I'm posting to my blog, I'm going to do a width of 1000 for the maximum size with a resolution of 72. And then for Facebook, I will do a maximum of 1800 for horizontal images and 1000 for vertical images. So that's what I have set up in my presets here. If I click on horizontal, we have 1800 for the width. Vertical, I have a height of 1000. So not a width of 1000, but a height of 1000. And then again, we want a resolution of 72 for online, whether it's social media or your blog. Print is going to be 240 or 300, depending on what's required of your in-home printer or the vendor of your choice. So again, you'll need to refer to them on what to use for the resolution, whether it's 240 or 300. Next, we have output sharpening. So you can output for different scenarios here, depending on what you need, and then you can adjust the amount from here. Now, personally, I prefer to sharpen my images in Lightroom and not during the export process. Now, we have some options here for metadata. You can include all metadata or choose from one of these other options here. Now, I like to do all metadata except for I will turn on remove person info and that will remove personal information as well as remove local information. That way you're not providing information to anybody about where that photo was taken, which is really good if you're taking photos of your kid in your backyard and there's geodata on that file or in the metadata, people can look up where you live. So you may want to remove that information from your file so nobody knows where you live. And then we have an option to add a watermark. So you can include your logo here or a simple copyright watermark. And if you click on edit watermarks, you're going to get this new window here where you can include a graphic or if you want to do a text based watermark, you can type in right here that information and then you have some options here to adjust the font type, the style, the alignment and some other options here. If we scroll down, there's additional options here as well for adjusting your watermark as well as the position from here. Now, what you can do is you can create a preset of this watermark so you don't have to come back in here and keep doing it over and over again. So I have my brand top right and bottom left for my graphic or my brand. And then you can click on save current settings as a new preset to create your own preset. All right, so the last option is post processing. You need to tell Lightroom what to do after export. You can simply have Lightroom do nothing or maybe you want to see those files in the finder window or the operating system folder that they have been exported to and then that window will pop up to show you those files or you can open them up into an application. All right, so once you've done that, you may want to save it as a preset because you may have multiple reasons to export your files. Like for myself, I have my blog, I have Facebook, I have a gallery on 500px and all of those are going to require different attributes during the export process. So instead of coming in here and readjusting all of these, all we have to do is click on add, give it a name, click create, and then that will create a preset for you. And then all you have to do is click export to export those files according to those attributes. All right, to continue elevating your Lightroom Classic editing skills, make sure to check out that playlist for some Lightroom Classic quick tips or this Lightroom Classic editing playlist for pro tips on editing your images in Lightroom Classic. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.